In today's video, I'm going to be going over 8 heroes you should be using in patch 7.22G to gain MMR. And in particular, I'm going to be going over the item builds that I think you should go on these heroes. We're going to be taking 5 that were buffed in the last patch, and then 3 that I just think have been good for a while, but aren't used as much. This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds, just like it, over at GameLeap.com. GameLeap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential, but for now, let's hop into the video. So the first year we're going to talk about is Night Stalker, and his buff didn't seem like a big deal. All that it was was that Void got put back to full damage in the daytime, right? Previous to this patch, in the daytime, his void would only do half, which hurt him a lot in the laning stage. And this does two things in particular, one that I think you would know, and the second that I don't think you probably have uh, thought about at this point. The first one is that it helps him secure creeps in the laning stage and deal damage to his opponents, which is of course useful, and that's probably what you knew. But the second half is that it makes his ags a lot more viable, and let's talk about why. So what's important to consider about this new Ags is that it does damage in an AoE with Void. That's the first important thing to note. And the second half is that it reduces the cooldown and gives a bit of a mini stun, right, and increases the stun. So if we look at it, right, it brings it down to a six second cooldown at max, right? And the impressive thing about that is that in the daytime previously, Night Stalker didn't have a good way to farm, he didn't have a good way to fight, but now you can do AoE damage in a fight, but more importantly, you can farm extremely quickly, nuking in creep waves with only two casts of your void. In the daytime previously, you couldn't buy Ags, you couldn't do this in the daytime, and so what I'm going to recommend is that you go face boots into a bracer and a wand, and then you can go like an urn, medallion, drums. If you want to buy the small items, that's fine. And then you buy this Ags, and it really allows you to scale into the late game. You can farm extremely quickly without going something like a Midas, which was recently nerfed this patch. And as a result, I think this is a, a great way to win pubs. You're a scaling hero that now has a better laning stage and actually is fantastic in the late game. The second hero is Sky. Now, I've talked about Sky before in a lot of videos where I'm like, pick this hero, pick this hero. I really think you should still pick this hero. If you're looking for a hero that you can carry solo queue with as pause for, I'm going to give two examples in this video, and this is one of them. You still have a 30 XP gain talent and dominate lanes. Buy mangoes, buy stats, buy null talismans, and just cast spells on the enemy. And then when a fight breaks down right after the fight ends, look for the open creep wave, farm with that 30% XP gain talent, you're gonna get all the way up to level 25 pretty early, get a GPM talent and just be a dominant late game force. And not only to mention that, like, you don't need to go late game to do damage. At level 6, your ultimate has been buffed and buffed and buffed and buffed. It's insane. Th this spell is insane. At level 1, at level 6, you have a 750 damage nuke. Pair any stun with Skywrath and you kill someone. It's that simple, and I genuinely think, even with slight communication, this hero becomes broken. And the last half about Skywrath is people don't buy Glimmers and Forest Staffs, and that is what counters Sky. Forest Staff in particular to get people out of his ultimate and out of range for his spells. But... There's just a lacking of these. Supports by Aether Lens, they buy Blink Daggers, they're very greedy. And as a result, I think Sky even has more viability. Third on this list is Coddle. Oh my god, dude, Coddle after this patch is crazy. You know, I, I don't know how much he'll be picked in the pro scene. I think he's going to be picked at least a decent amount after this change. Because in the past, people were leveling by Blinding Light, right? It, it was literally level 1, people would take it to Grief CS because it gives you missed chance. Now, they just all of a sudden reduced it by 16 seconds. The spell lasts for 3 seconds, and it scales up. If you max in the laning stage, you can get it up to 4, 5, or 6, and you miss for 70% of the time, and it scales in damage and in cast range. It's really good for defending towers, winning the laning stage, and... Not only that, he also has gotten buffs in the previous patches as well. I genuinely think Coddle is a hero to try out this patch as a 5. Um, I'm not a huge fan of him as a, a 4 in particular. Do I think it's bad? No. I just think you could pair him very well with other team fighters, such as maybe a Earth Spirit or a Rubik. Anything like that. I, I think there's a lot of strong combos that give you a ton of AoE damage that absolutely destroy fights with Coddle. So what I'm going to recommend is that you max out this Blinding Light, right? Or at least you level at level 1, you spam it on the enemy. Anytime a last hit is coming up, cast it on them. Make them miss. Make them miss and get the denies. That is the strength of your hero, so please abuse it. In terms of items, uh, I know I skipped over Skywrath just because uh, I've mentioned his items in other videos and you just want to buy Null Talismans. <laughs> but for Coddle, what I highly recommend is that you simply work on mobility. So you go for Tranquil Boots, you go for a Wind Lace, you can buy a Magic Stick here and there, you can buy Clarities if you're using Chakramana on your teammates and not yourself, 
And then most importantly, you go for things like Force Staff and Glimmer Cape and just have a lot of utility to kite in and out of the fight. What's very important is that you can get multiple Blinding Lights off, multiple Illuminates off, and most important, at least get your Will-O-Wisp up. Also, side note, I think a lot of people forget that Coddle has Mana Drain. Chakra Magic is Mana Drain now, it just doesn't stun. So, next up is Paka. I have a friend that really likes this hero right now. He's a level 25 Puck and... I'm confident this hero has viability as a right clear. I've had quite a bit of discussion talking about the hero. And yes, I do think it has a lot of viability and scales quite well now. It recently got an agility buff, right? If you guys remember, Puck got an agility buff going from 1.7 to 2.2, a half a point of agility per level. So if you get to level 10, you get five more agility. It's quite good, quite good considering Puck already right clicked well what i mentioned in the last video the patch video was that he already has good right click talents puck is an extremely good right clicker and i want to talk about potential item builds because i think that's where things get a little bit iffy on this hero or can be heavily debated and i'm not going to say i know what is perfectly best because i don't but i have some ideas so i'm going to mention a couple different crazy things here uh, people are definitely going to disagree, and I, I'll be happy to hear what you have to say, but I've been thinking about this a little bit ever since my discussion. And first off, in the landing stage, I think it's great to just buy your normal stats. You can buy a wand, null talismans, a bassy if you need it, uh, go into the treads, still buy a bottle if you feel like it's worth it for the game. This is fine. Just whatever stats you find appropriate for your landing stage are good. It helps you win the early game and, and snowball forward. After that, I'm a big fan of this Midas because I think your talents are very important to get. You get this level 10 stats talent, which is fantastic for helping you once again snowball the early game. Most importantly, the big spike for Puck, in my opinion, is level 15, the 90 damage talent. I, I genuinely think this is significantly better than the 15% spell amp, even if you're going somewhat spell items because it allows you to take large camps very effectively. Your two nukes would take forever to farm it, even if you had spell amp. And you still generally one-shot waves with your nukes as long as you're buying intelligence items and as a result i'm gonna recommend that you go midas the majority of games it might sound greedy but your spells still do a lot of damage and you can fight even with an item like midas now what i'm gonna recommend after that is a couple different items a few in my mind that that sound good or seem good in theory first off is shadow blade and you might be like well why don't i just get a blink and i think a lot of the times you still do have to go blink if they have good catch for you because you know puck uses it so well but if you're going this 90 damage talent the attack speed from shadow blade and the amount of damage actually burst you have amplifies a lot and in solo queue detection is very underused and frankly i often just see shadow blade as an item that gives you significantly more dps than blink and, and the same sort of initiation in lower mmr solo queue or the majority of, of brackets to be frank so you can debate me on that one that's fine with me but both of these items are like shadow blade drums early right click you can go for blink that's totally fine as well after that my friend he personally liked orchid i think it has viability i'm not the hugest fan of it as i think it kind of gives you a slight lacking of stats but i definitely like something like a shadow blade dragon lance bkb and it sounds bizarre it i know it sounds completely whack and it's probably not the best thing in the world but no joke this hero hits hard it's really hard like really really hard and you can be sort of just this backline right clicker who uses silence as a mid game utility to prevent himself from getting jumped or just for farming. I mean, uh, once again, this is speculation, but I genuinely think this hero is becoming better and better and will soon become a good pick. I think in one more patch, if it gets a few more buffs helping out its early laning stage and ability to continue scaling, it's going to get quite good. Next up on the list is Dark Willow. This is not a hero that was buffed last patch as it was quite good in TI, definitely a picked hero. And... Why do I like Dark Willow? Because Dark Willow is a hero that can solo kill. Similar to Skywrath Mage, you'll notice the trend. These heroes actually don't necessarily have the best farming capabilities in comparison to something like a Rubik with the soul and spell or a Lina. Yeah, they don't clear waves nearly as well. It's not even close. But what they do a little bit better than both those heroes is kill. If you learn how to play Willow, and what I'm going to recommend is that you go Brown Boots into Stick, Windlace into Yules, and learn the combo. If you don't know the general combo, you Curse Crown, you Yules, so when they're coming down, the stun will be just about ready. You throw down the root while they're still in the air as well. You get ultimate if they're a hero with high escape, like an Ember Spirit. And then you turn on your Bedlam, as well as your W, and just one-shot the majority of heroes. It's super strong for solo queue where people are very disorganized. So if you take a backline stance on the fights and simply kite around looking for that one hero you can just solo kill, you can win fights. You can carry games as a support. Next up one is uh, something a little bit controversial. I, I like to kind of talk about things that can tick people off sometimes. I think it's fun and it's good discussion for the community. I sometimes think that people like get a little bit 
sensitive when it comes to things that maybe they had a previously bad experience with or, or something that is known to be generally a grief. But you have to understand Dota is such a diverse game, so something like jungling has- <laughs> I know I just said that word and feel like, NO! <laughs> But Venno Jungle, I'm telling you, this this is the future. And I, I'm like slightly not kidding. I actually think you can easily, like if you understand the farming patterns of Venno in the jungle, which you can easily practice in a bot match or a custom lobby, you can no problem get to 5, 6k MMR. Like you're like speed, you're out of your mind. I'm not out of my mind. People don't pressure the lanes well or collapse on the map easily. So why not have a fourth core? When I was 3 and 4k MMR a few years ago, I would not care. If I had a core, because I understood, like I, I figured out very early on that in a lot of games, they could carry. If they got a good enough start and I understood how to win the lane, which is something I was good at, even when I was low MMR, it was something I practiced a lot, they would come online and I could carry the early game, they could carry mid. It worked fantastically. And therefore, Venno Jungle, he's one of the fastest junglers in the game. He can stay on top of levels with the mid laner. I'm not kidding. All you have to buy is a Blightstone, Clarities, you can move into a Bassy later on, go into Treads, Midas, if you're extremely greedy and a real psychopath, then what I recommend is you can go Helm Dom if you really want to pressure towers. You take over a creep you run down lanes set up your plague wards then you can go into a veil which gives you a lot more damage and finally buy an axe and you have insane team fight and you can really do well in the early game all you have to do is put the majority of your points into plague wards right you max that when you're jungling max your plague wards put the rest into your poison sting and have one point in gale for ganking probably take that around level six seven or eight because you can skip your ultimate at six and you're off to the races you are extremely good at counter ganking mid because you can often farm around mid you can take towers no problem your plague wards just got buffed gale just got buffed this year is legit please give it a chance before you completely knock it just because you heard that it's jungling next up on the list is the third hero that did not receive a buff but i think is a genuinely amazing solo queue hero and that is dazzle I've been talking to a student recently about Dazzle, and the reason why I think it, it's good is straightforward. It has a strong landing stage, right? Your poison thing is extremely good against the majority of your heroes. If they're caught out of position, especially if you're pulling well, you're going to get insane amounts of damage. It's very hard to trade. And at level 2, you can sustain all the cores who don't buy enough tangos. I hear all the time, like, eh, my junk didn't buy any regen. Like, no, I don't care that your junk didn't buy any regen. Like, just then play Dazzle and heal him. You can... If you get good enough at trading and understand how to use your spells and play around vision well enough, you can just carry anyone in lane as Dazzle. And no, I'm not kidding. No, even if it's an Abaddon, you can still do well enough. Even if he has the ability to purchase poison sting, you still can win the lane. If you pull properly, cast your spells enough, buy enough regen, it's possible. And Dazzle is super good at this. And the second half, something I've talked a bit a lot about. If you haven't heard of this concept, watch my Jakiro video that I recently made farm farm as a support and dazzle is the best he one of the best at that he has a 30 percent xp gain talent he has cooldown reduction which allows you to buy necro one just necro one and scale scale guys just scale and i know a lot of you guys aren't even gonna try this because it's not me saying it directly to your face right you're just like ah this is just you know ah it's just in a video i don't know. like please listen to me listen try these things out when a fight breaks down look for the open farm and hopefully you'll notice some results and finally, last one on the list is one that I think is probably the best hero on this list or getting up there is Chaos Knight, right? I had a little bit of discussion. I asked a question in the last video, which is better, the 15 strength or the 15 cooldown reduction. And I think it's because this hero's talents are just so good. They're just so good. If we look at them at all levels, every single one is so good. At level 10, you can have 20 movement speed or 5 all stats. You're probably going to take the stats, right, because your hero loves strength. At 15, you have 15% cooldown reduction or 15 strength, which is funny, you know, 15-15. But both of those are absolutely god tier. At level 20, you have Reality Rift Pierce's Spell Immunities, which allows you to completely counter BKBs. You can one-shot any BKB core, even if they're, you know, because a lot of intelligence heroes, how they live against the Chaos Knight is buying BKB so that he can't get on top of them. This counters that. Or you can take GPM and scale even harder into the late game. And at 25, you have minus 2 second chaos strike cooldown, which is meh. But the better one is 2 max chaos bolt duration. You can stun someone for 6 seconds. 6 seconds. I'm not kidding. You literally can stun someone for 6 seconds. That's crazy. And not only that, he has an extremely good laning stage. Your passive, if you max it out, it just got buffed last patch as well. It got buffed. If you max it out, you'll do totally fine in any lane. Like, you can win most lanes just by sustaining and critting people. Your stun has been buffed, right? It's only 110 mana now and is more reliable. It, it, that's been buffed. You farm, like, okay. 
If you pair your Chaos Knight with something like a Magnus, it really can get out of hand. I mean, it's not necessarily the best Magnus hero, but the farming is, is pretty nuts. And then you go early game items, and the great thing about Chaos Knight is he turns early game items into the highest damage items in the game. What I recommend, even after the nurse of Solar Crest, is that you go Armlet into Solar Crest into Heart. Now, of course, I didn't mention the early game items. Please, please buy a wand on Chaos Knight so you could buy a Bracer, a wand, go Treads or Phase Boost. They're both good into the armlet solar heart and then a bkb afterwards or even a bkb before the heart and if you buy these early game stat based items you're going to deal a ton of damage you're going to fight well early and then scale well into the late game I, I genuinely think this hero has a lot of potential and should be tested with and thank you for watching guys i appreciate your time hopefully you enjoyed and we'll have some success on some of these heroes i wish you the best of luck and hopefully i'll see you in the next video peace are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.